of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who comes to us in his body and blood today, be with you always. It's so good to be here for this very special occasion. And because it is so special, I know that many of you want to take pictures, but I'd ask you to try and focus on what we're doing together today. Thankfully, uh, through the gift of technology and our volunteer videography team from the parish here, we're able to record the video and live stream it. And uh, the Hoaglands, Ms. Mrs. Hoagland and her husband usually are able to find a still shot in there of your child receiving First Communion. So you'll be able to receive that later. As we enter into this celebration, we know that God is loving and merciful and wants to help us throughout our lives, especially through the Eucharist. But he also wants to help us to let go of our baggage and our guilt. So let us ask God to forgive our sins so that we can participate more worthily in this sacred celebration. Lord Jesus, you reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You give pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. You nourish and strengthen us in word and sacrament. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have accomplished the work of human redemption through the paschal mystery of your only begotten Son, his life, death, and resurrection, graciously grant that we, who confidently proclaim under sacramental signs the death and resurrection of Christ, may continue, may experience continued increase of your saving grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to the Word of God. Listen to how St. Paul, an apostle, an early disciple of Christ, shares with us the mystery that we're about to celebrate in communion today. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my 
My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. May the words of the Gospel be on my mind, on my lips, and always in my heart. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also The one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I promise I'm not going to ask the kids any tough questions today. It's been a long time since you've had your classes, right? But think about this in your minds. Why are we here today? Why are we here today? We're here today because we're Catholic and we want to receive the sacraments. We're here today perhaps because your parents want to share the gift of their faith with you as you grow into uh, becoming a, an adult as a Catholic, believing in Jesus and following him. We're here today for many reasons. But the most important reason we're here today is because of God's love for each one of you, each one of you children, and God's love for each one of us, for each person that God has created. And children, like your parents, want to give you what is good. They want to give you what's going to be most helpful to you. God wants to give us that too. God, our Heavenly Father, is like your loving parents and your family, your grandparents, your loved ones, your godparents. God is a loving, caring, heavenly Father. And He wants to give you what is best. Now sometimes when our parents give us what's best for us, like, oh, I don't know, vegetables, we might not like it that much. But it is what's good for us. And so we try to trust in what our parents know more and better than us. And the same is true with the gift of the Eucharist, the gift of communion that you're about to receive. It doesn't taste really good. It's not like, you know, pizza or ice cream or a cookie or anything. We don't receive communion because it tastes good. We receive communion because Jesus promised us that this is such a precious gift that will help us that we say, yes, Jesus, I trust you. I want you to help me in this life, and I want you to help me to get into heaven. A few weeks ago at one of the Sunday Masses that had First Communion, we had a Gospel reading that talked about a treasure that was found in the field and how someone who discovered that treasure hid it again went and sold everything that they had to be able to buy that field so they could have that treasure you're here i'm here your catechists your teachers mrs hoagland are here Father Lambert wishes he could be here, but he's celebrating Mass with the uh, Religious of Jesus and Mary this morning in Plainville, the sisters. But we're here because God has given us such a great treasure that we're willing to do anything we can to get rid of the obstacles in the way and share in that treasure. You know, sometimes we, we wish for things, things that we think are really important, like a new bicycle or the latest um, computer game, the latest Xbox or PlayStation or whatever it is. What do we play today? A lot of different things that we might wish for, things in our lives. But when we ask the children today, I know that they would come up with some other things that are really important treasures too. Things that we pray that God will give us. Like the love of our families. An end to the, to the uh, pandemic, an end to the illness. Finding a vaccine, one child told me. That was his wish. And these are a sign to us that 
as parents and grandparents, brothers and sisters, you have helped these children to realize what is a true treasure as opposed to things that we'll enjoy for a while, but they don't last. We're here because we have that great treasure of our faith and the great gift of Jesus in the Eucharist that we receive as communion. And we are so happy to be able to share this treasure with these children who have prepared for almost a full year now, participating in the Sacrament of Reconciliation and now the Sacrament of Communion. One of the beautiful things about both of these sacraments is that we can do them again and again. We can receive these gifts, these promises from Jesus that he acts powerfully in our lives through these sacraments because of his love for each one of us. And as we gather today, we treasure the gift of Jesus in his body and blood like St. Paul did. And he began that first reading by saying, I hand on to you what I have received. Thank God that we've received this gift through Jesus, that we don't have to fully understand how Jesus does it, how he turns bread and wine into his body and blood, because we understand with our hearts that this is an act of God's love, that you, my children, my friends, and families, you are precious to God, and he wants to be with you, not only next to you as a friend, but he wants to be inside you, inside your heart, to share his help, his grace, we call it, to help us to follow Jesus more closely, to know that even when we mess up, even when we make mistakes, and even when we do something on purpose and sin, that's not the end of the story. God loves you so much, he wants to forgive us and bring us closer to him in the sacraments. So as we prepare to celebrate the Eucharist, the transformation of the bread and wine into Jesus' body and blood, let us thank God for this treasure, especially in this year of 2020, when we need God's help more than ever, and this year is a special holy year that our Cardinal Archbishop, Cardinal Sean, has named in, in focus on the Eucharist, the gift of the Eucharist, that so many of us have gone without for so many, so many months, and many people are still not able to come to church, and that's why we're inviting them to join us online so that we can celebrate the gift of this Eucharist, the gift of God's love and grace and help, and treasure this gift this year above all others, and continue to come back to be strengthened by God's love every time we come to Mass. Let us stand. As people of God, we offer our prayers to the Lord, praying not only for ourselves and one another, but for the whole church and all people of the world. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for each one of these children who will be receiving First Eucharist today, that God's presence may always be with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the teachers, that God may continue to inspire them and give them loving hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the families, that God may bless them, strengthen them, and help them to love one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish community, that through the great gift of the Eucharist, we will grow together in love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all of our loved ones who could not be with us today, that they share in the joy of this day, whether they are 
somewhere else on this earth or with God in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many ways you bless our lives, especially giving us the gift of your only Son to die, to rise again, and to nourish and strengthen us in his own body and blood. We ask all these things through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you please be seated? The greatest commandment is to love God and one another. And as you may have seen on some of the signs around our church, we love one another at this time in particular by the way that we help to keep each other safe, especially our elders and those who may be more vulnerable. So we'd ask as we continue our Mass today that you would uh, with res uh, refrain, that's the word, that you would refrain from holding hands during the Our Father, that we'll, uh, we'll, we will not offer the sign of peace at this time, and we'll be offering communion only under the form of bread, the body of Christ. But his blood and his divinity are truly present in even just the host. So we'll continue our celebration today. Let us stand. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Celebrating the memorial of our salvation, we humbly beseech your mercy, O Lord, that this sacrament of your loving kindness may be for us the sign of unity and the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the last supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift 
of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us kneel, or if kneeling is difficult, you may be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Believing that Jesus Christ is now present on this altar here with us, we proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Saint Martha, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
Let us stand. It was Jesus himself who taught us that we could dare to call Almighty God, who is Jesus' Father, we could call him our Father as well. And so, at the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take, you take away, away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Let us kneel. We've come to that special time in the Mass that we're about to receive communion. And so our First Communion children, boys and girls, will receive their First Communion first, naturally. And then we will invite others to join us. This is a little different than the video that uh, we made to show you online. That was what we did on Sundays, uh, having what was in the video. Today, Mrs. Hoagland will lead the First Communion children around and up the side aisle, and they'll be receiving uh, at the front of the side aisles, which is how we've been doing communion lately. And then after they're finished, they'll come back to the, their pew and uh, we'll invite the families uh, to come forward at that time. If you are uh, receiving, and even if you are not receiving communion, we would ask you to please step out of your pew anyway so that people don't have to climb over each other and you're invited, if you're not receiving communion, you're invited to come forward for a simple blessing. Just put your arms across your chest as a way of telling me that you're asking for a blessing instead of communion, and I'd be happy to give you a simple Christian blessing. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Just as a reminder to the children, right, you're going to put your hands together, one on top of the other, with your mask still on as you come up to number one on the floor. And when I give you the body of Christ, you're all going to say, I can't hear you. Wonderful. Thank you for being nice and loud. It's hard with the masks on. Then you'll step aside to number two and still facing the altar, use your free hands to remove your mask, put the host in your mouth and put your mask back on before returning to your seat uh, with your family.
Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Hear the Lord prepares the feast divine. Bread of love is broken now, cup of life is
precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Here the Lord prepares the feast divine. Bread of love is broken now, cup of life is poured. Come share the suffering of the Lord. A prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and a desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Let us pray. May sharing at the heavenly table sanctify us, Lord, we pray, so that through the body and blood of Christ, the whole family of believers may be bound together. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And that's why we offer that prayer for spiritual communion, so that those who are joining with us online and those who cannot be with us are able to share in that unity of Christ as we thank God for the gift of the communion these children have received now for the first time. Please join me in congratulating the children on their first communion. And in the homily I mentioned, this is one of those sacraments we get to receive more than once. So after your first communion, what's the next one called? Second communion. And then after that? Third communion. So we look forward to seeing you and your being able to join with all those who are receiving communion every time you come to Mass. Thank you especially to the parents who were instrumental even more than usual this year in these children's preparation. Thank you very much. Grandparents and others who helped these children to grow in faith, especially the catechists and uh, Mrs. Hoagland, Maggie Hoagland, for the phenomenal job she does directing and serving these children and their teachers. As we leave the church, I believe you have the certificate. 
excuse me, the certificates already in your pew, so please don't forget to bring those home. And because you'll be receiving uh, a little gift bag from Mrs. Hoagland, God bless her, uh, we're going to ask you all to go out the same door that you came in, and that means we're going to have to dismiss you one pew at a time to make sure that we can keep some physical distancing. So please wait until one of our ushers or greeters tells you it's your turn to leave uh, from your pew. Thank you again for all the things that you've done and being here today. There'll be an opportunity for pictures outside if it's not raining. Uh, and like I said, uh, you'll be receiving a link, if you haven't already, to the, to the video from today's celebration. My friends, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Greetings, your faithfulness to God.